now to Manufactured Spend for getting credit card sign-up bonuses. Today, I'm going to show you how to manufactured spend online so you could spend money on your credit card while also paying off your credit card. This is something a lot of credit card churners do because they want those credit card sign-up bonuses where you could get hundreds of dollars or frequent flyer miles, bank points, hotel points to live a super comfortable life for very little effort. This is how people like me stay in very nice hotel suites, ride in business class or first class and basically travel for free. The essence of doing all this comes down to credit card sign-up bonuses and manufactured spend because you don't want to waste money trying to get money. So with that, I'm going to show you the five best ways to manufactured spend online. And this is my favorite way because you can do it from anywhere in the world and you don't have to physically do anything. It's just all online. Now, this is going to be a super valuable lesson. I'm going to start with some of the worst ones and end on the best ones. So watch the whole thing because these concepts can teach you to look for potential manufactured spending opportunities in your own life. And with that, I'd also like to ask you to like the video because that helps the YouTube algorithm and I have to keep saying that so people watch the whole thing and like the video because this is valuable information that you're getting for free and we can help each other. Number five resell items. So with the PS5 or the new Xbox, that is clearly going to sell out. Also with the iPhone. So there's always certain items that are released every year in very limited supply. This also applies to limited edition coins or sneakers. So there is a lot of different opportunities to resell items. In the past, concert tickets were a great way of manufactured spending, but there might not be any concerts for a while. So look for the items that are going to sell out and all you have to do is resell them. I said you can do this online, you could always have the items shipped to your place and then you could ship them off to another facility. Now there are places that do fulfillment for you, like you could send an item directly to Amazon to do the fulfillment process for you where you send it to them, they store it, they ship it for you, but then of course they charge a fee. If you're trying to maximize your manufactured spending, you'd probably have to do all that work. And it's not my favorite option, but it is an option. Number four, fund a bank account. Now, some bank accounts allow you to fund with a credit card, and these are bank accounts that also give you a banking bonus. So if you're opening a checking account and they'll let you add $500 or something with a credit card. Of course, this varies from bank to bank. I love using Doctor of Credit because they have a list of all of this. They tell you which banks apply to which states, which are nationwide, what the bonus are, or what the bonus is. And if you can add money to your account, or by funding it with a credit card. Yeah, it's just like you get the credit card bonus and you also uh, get a bank bonus. So it's like a two for one. That is a great option. And if you want to know how bank bonuses work, I made a video on that as well as how credit card bonuses work. Number three, Rebate Key. Rebate Key is an Amazon seller platform where they sell items at a discounted price, sometimes 100% off. Those are the ones I buy and you get your money 35 days later. So Rebate Key just helps Amazon sellers sell and rank their items because you need sales velocity to make it to the first page of Amazon. I did a video on how I failed at selling on Amazon and how Rebate, uh, and how Rebate Key works in great detail. So you can check that out more if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, Rebate Key is a great way to get free stuff at 100% off. Some things might be unnecessary, but you're putting credit card spend on your account anyway, which 
gains you those credit card bonuses. Number two, PayPal. With PayPal, you can send money to a friend or relative for a fee using your credit card. That fee is 2.9% plus 30 cents. Let's just round up and call it 3% just because the math is a lot easier. So for every thousand dollars you send to your friend or family member using PayPal, it's gonna cost you 30 bucks. But before you dive into PayPal, you should know that there's risks. With PayPal, people get shut down. So you need to ease into using PayPal so it doesn't look fraudulent. I would suggest doing transactions of $500 or less, like once or twice a week until you get comfortable using it before going into bigger numbers. The most I've sent in one transaction was 2000 bucks, but I heard a lot of people were getting their accounts frozen, so I bring it down to 1000 So the most I'll do using PayPal in one transaction is $1,000. Your experience may vary. I'm just very concerned about my money being frozen in PayPal because that sucks. It is not easy to get your PayPal account unfrozen, so this is a double-edged sword of convenience. So take it easy, really build up your PayPal account before doing large amounts of manufactured spend using PayPal. This is how it works. I log into PayPal, I add my credit card that I need to make that sign up bonus spend on, and I send money to my brother for $1,000. So that's a $30 fee. And as soon as my brother gets that $30, he transfers that money back to me using the bank transfer service called Zelle, which costs zero dollars, there's no fee, because you're just sending actual assets to another account. And once I receive that, I pay off the credit card. This happens all in the span of one week, so I'm not getting hit with any interest charges. That's it, it's that simple, and you do all your manufactured spend from home. I know 3% is a little high on the side of manufactured spend, but I'd gladly pay that 3% fee for the convenience. That brings me to my number one option, Stockpile. Stockpile is my favorite way to manufacture spend because it's very easy. Basically, you are buying stocks with a credit card and that comes at a 3% fee plus 99 cents. So let's just round down to 3% anyway, because that's easier. You spent $10,000 on your credit card, that's a 3% fee, you're paying $300 to generate $10,000 in spend. There are limitations to stockpile, like you can only buy and sell at market close, and a few other things. I did a very detailed review on how to buy stocks with credit cards, and it's really just a full-on stockpile review. Check that out for more details. It's very important to understand your cost. Whenever you're manufactured spending, you're gonna wanna understand how much it costs, how much your time it takes, and is it worth it? So that's why on the blog post I have, I kind of put the different rates. PayPal and Venmo comes at a 3% fee, that's very convenient, whereas physical gift card reselling can bring your cost down between one to 2%, which is like at least half, so you save more money, because $10,000 at 3% is 300 bucks. Do you really want to spend $300 in fees? That's a lot of money. So you really have to be aware of how much time you're spending, how much money you're getting, how much value is it worth. For myself, I want something completely easy, which is why I use Stockpile. That is my number one pick for manufactured spending, and it's just very easy, but at the same time, there's a lot of risk. Since this is the stock market, you don't know what's gonna happen. You could make money, you could lose money. Uh, in my specific situation, I made money, I was very lucky, and I got out. I'm also not a financial advisor, so I'm not gonna tell you what stocks to buy, but I would suggest looking into ETFs because 
they encompass the entire stock market and they move much slower. So there's a much lower risk of that dropping to 50% in value overnight. If, they, if things do drop, they are gonna drop significantly slower. If things uh, spike up, they are gonna move up a lot slower. So that's pretty much how ETFs work because they are a compilation of different stocks to form that ETF. So be very careful. If you made money, take your win and move your money to a real investing account because Stockpile isn't the best experience you'll have as an investor. Use whatever you're comfortable with. There's also ways like selling Amazon gift cards, selling $25 Amazon gift cards on eBay because they sell for like $30 and after fees and shipping it directly from Amazon to them is very easy. There's other things like sales arbitrage you could do where you're just buying low and selling high. And that's a little more advanced and a lot more effort. For the full details and this list, check out my blog post in the description. Uh, there's other ways to manufacture spend offline, as in in person, and that's with gift cards. That's a very popular way of doing things, and I hate doing it because it's very stressful. Since I live in Los Angeles, not a lot of places accept uh, these gift cards. Yeah, I go to Walmart or I went to like five different Walmarts and no one will sell me a money order. So that process is difficult. This is the manufactured spending process that most of the travel community uses and it's gift cards. Basically, they buy thousands of dollars worth of Visa gift cards at low fees. I think they come out to like between one to 2%, which is pretty low. And then they get money orders. They go to Walmart and they liquidate these gift cards for money orders. Then they deposit the money orders in the bank to pay off the credit card. It sounds easy, but it's actually very difficult. If you live in a big city like Los Angeles or New York, Walmart, uh, Walmart workers and um, other places that sell money orders have caught on and they're highly sensitive to fraud. So I don't know if I, I want to say that. Uh, I don't, I'm going to censor it and then I'm going to write some of the letters on screen because I don't want to get demonetized because this is going to be a helpful video and if more people watch it, that gives me ad revenue. Watch those ads, that helps me. I mean, you could skip some, but if you want to be like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom th during this commercial break, do it. That's, uh, that's the best time to take a break. So most people do the gift card route. I tried it and it was a lot of a wasted time and effort on my part. I was able to do it early on in like the 2015 era, but then as Walmart started catching on to it and it became more difficult to liquidate the gift cards. And it's very stressful walking around with thousands of dollars in gift cards in multiple Walmarts because the ones in LA are in bad areas. Yeah, you don't really put many Walmarts in a good area. They go in bad neighborhoods where it's, uh, it's possible to get robbed. I'm just saying, and I don't wanna be, uh, you know, classist, but that's what it is. Don't worry, I live in a bad neighborhood. Uh, at least I used to in LA before moving out to another country to hide out in 2020. So if you want a manufactured spend, and this just kept going, I just kept talking, huh? All right, so if uh, you want a manufactured spend, those are the best ways to do it. For more information, check out the blog post for details. This has been Full Value Dan. Thanks for valuing.